sad to say I was here 12 years ago when we did that. <laughs> okay, thank you. Health and Public Assistance, Mr. Link. Uh, I have no uh, report this week, Mayor. Thank you. Any communications or petitions? Yes, Mayor. Um, we received one late letter uh, dated today from Heidi Zepp on Samson Avenue regarding parking. Okay. And I guess if you could uh, refer a copy of that to Ms. Sukamoto, that she yes. could take work with uh, the police department. Yes. Thank you. Thanks. At this time, open the meeting for discussion on anything that's on the agenda um, or listed for resolutions. Is there anyone wishing to be heard at this time? Seeing none, we'll move on to our one and only item this evening, which is the North Street pump station status. Mm -hmm. I can give a short-term and a mid-term and a long-term report. Short-term is we've ordered two special manhole inserts that have been received by Public Works that have deodorizing units contained within them. And approximately two weeks ago, the way we usually deodorize the line was in a mesh netting that detached, unfortunately, from that mesh netting, blocked the line, which caused a tremendous sewer backup, and our equipment got stuck, and sewer raw sewage overflowed and affected homeowners on Fairview Avenue. This new manhole, the insert, the deodorizing block is actually in the insert, so it's not attached. It's actually physically attached to the manhole cover itself. They cost $1,500 a piece, so we've ordered two demonstration models. They'll be installed this week. If they're successful, then we will put four additional along Fairview Avenue, which will address the residential community in that vicinity. That's the short term. Midterm is we're going to, there's a force main that needs to be cleaned out, uh, and in uh, David Main's budget, he had a funding request for a camera. So as part of that camera process, we're going to try to identify areas to make sure the force main is clear. And if it's not, we will be cleaning it out on a short term. The longer term basis was discussed at the capital budget hearing at the library, that this was the number one property uh, priority for the, the sewer department of a $400,000 funding commitment for a total renovation of the uh, North Street pump station, which would include a deodorizing unit on site, which would be a 1,500 gallon tank so before the gas and the smell gets into the pipe and works its way down to a neighborhood it would be stopped at its source so we wouldn't be treating an odor that got underway it, the odor would be stopped in its tracks at this location that's a long-range plan and we'll be that's currently under design and we'll be coming to you with a request to try to um, see if we can afford the longer term so I'll have a short midterm and the long term is to try to get the best possible price to fix the whole pump station which hasn't been repaired in approximately 60 years the, um, there was a, a letter that you had drafted that was going out to residents. Has that gone out yet? That, that letter did go out. We didn't get a great response. Ten people self-reported that we believe we have people who are illegally connecting their sump pumps to our sanitary sewer system, which brings a great amount volume of water, and untreated water takes up capacity in the pipe that should be there for waste to be treated and transported to the joint meeting on Passaic Avenue in Chatham. So the, the initial letter was a, a letter indicating, here's the ordinance, this is what you can do. If you have this issue, this is how you could correct it. If you don't, this is the enforcement that we would take. Uh, and this is the penalty if you don't respond. Uh, we haven't <coughs> taken the next step. The next step would be physically to actually knock on the doors in the, in particular, the North Street pump station area. It's approximately 800 residents that we believe are involved. Not all of which who have these illegal connections. And these go back many, many, many years where their sump pumps are connected, their, their drain lines and gutters and leaders, they connect to the sanitary source system instead of running it out to a storm drain, they connect to the sanitary source system. And that takes up huge volume and overtaxes the North Street pump station. We did this a few years ago. We Do did. Every and couple I mean, of years, the, yeah. The, the response wasn't good. And the response wasn't good up. in order to do it, I mean, because people can temporarily disconnect and the moment you leave the house, reconnect and put the hose back in the sump pump. The other way of doing it, which is where you, which is a little more aggressive, is you do a smoke test, which gets people very nervous. You drop a pellet and, a, and you smoke into the system and then it comes out to the person's home and you know that they are illegally connected to your system. That's a little scary for people at home. So we... That's our last resort to do that on notice, but we're hoping to correct it with this mailing, but the response has not been good. The next step would be to knock on the doors and say, we'd like to come in and inspect your sump pump. What's interesting, and I, I shared this with Ray earlier, um, it, the, this year is the 100th anniversary of 
the beginning of the building of the uh, joint meeting in Chatham, the sewer plant. Um, it was dedicated in 19, November of 1911, started operation. And even then, we were having illegal connections right from the beginning and the problems with the North Street pump station. Um, the health inspector at the time was a Fred, an S. Fred Burnett. <laughs> and uh, he was sent out along with um, Mr. Rowe, who was the um, in borough engineer, and they went and knocked door to knocked on doors, door to door. Um, same areas where we're having problems today. Um, people who had connected before inspection permits were even or sewer permits were even put in place. At that time in 1911, the the fine was fifty dollars a connection if it was illegally connected. Do we have any kind of um, recourse if this persists and we have illegal connections or cost of what it would we be? We do if we can identify them. The, the issue is who's going to be the enforcing entity. As we discussed, I think, previously, the fire official, at Captain Nunn, has legal access to a home and can't, denial of entry is considered a violation under the fire code just by definition. None of our other inspectors have that same police power to get access without a warrant. So we are envisioning trying to do a scheduled program utilizing the fire department. Uh, we also had the option, but we didn't think it was prudent when we're doing water readings <coughs> that we didn't think was appropriate when the water inspector is there to read the meter. We didn't think it was fair to the homeowner that they're looking for other things and the f homeowner wouldn't be aware of the why they were there. They were there to read the meter specifically and we felt that was the most appropriate. It's an invasion of their privacy to then walk around their basement and look at their sump pump and check something else out. So we believe the enforcement will be through the fire department with a uniform officer producing identification, knocking on a door, and then hopefully we'll get a better result. But is there, is there a fine though? If oh, there's a substantial. It's a five hundred dollar uh, up to five hundred dollar a day fine. It's a continuing violation. Not that that would be assessed. We, we'd rather have compliance than the money. But but it's exactly. causing a major problem at North Street. It's overtaxing the pumps. I know we they're burn. They're burning out. Because they're just running, 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 running. Constantly. Does anyone have any questions for Ray? Uh, I, no, but I'd just like to piggyback on that uh, situation on North Street. At the budget meeting, we had problems with the Danford Road with the pine. And, you know, we got a lot of water problems there. And I remember six, seven years ago, there was some people came here to, to, to explain about the problem. Uh, you know, I think it's important that we look at that. Because uh, we do get tons of water from I'm up right. on Madison Avenue, and I uh, I talked to a few people there, and they, they, I think between the whole four streets, there's only four catch basins. Right. So I think uh, I think <laughs> it's a it's a which might go to your point that they don't have a place to put stormwater, so they're using their sump sewer. pumps, which are probably connected to the sanitary sewers, which is blowing out the pumps right. at at North Street. Yeah, if, he, if they had a place to pump to in the cemetery, I mean the stormwater, that might, that, that's a very good possibility. Anyone else? Just as we, we saw in the report from the uh, storm last weekend, that, the, that besides flooding basements from the rainwater, there were several homes that uh, reported uh, sanitary backups, and that comes from people illegally dumping their stormwater. So now, uh, it's more than just a violation. You have, you know, literally violated someone's basement because of that. So uh, we, we really need to get on this. Yes. Right. Anyone else? Seeing none, we'll go to ordinances for hearing.